Hey everybody, it's Elliot from Little Pong People here, and today I'm going to be talking to one of my favorite metal vocalists of all time, Corpse Grinder of Cannibal Corpse. Now, I'm sure you're aware of their most recent album that was released in 2021 called Violence Unimagined, one of my favorite metal albums of 2021. Well, they're going to start their tour in February 18th at Atlanta, Georgia, which is already sold out, actually. And I have to say, I got to see Cannibal Corpse live at the Red Before Black tour, and they had one of the best shows I've ever been to in my entire life. One of the most memorable shows ever for me. But anyways, let's just get into the interview. Let's do this! <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Elliot from Little Punk People here, and today I'm here with the one and only Corpse Grinder from Cannibal Corpse. Are you ready? Oh yeah. Let's do this. I think that <clears throat> Violence Unimagined is one of your best records yet. Would you agree? Yeah, we're uh, extremely happy with it. <clears throat> the reaction was amazing uh, across the board from the fans and whatnot. You know, we're, uh, you know we worked really hard on it, and we would have obviously toured for it last year. But uh, we're leaving next week, and uh, we'll be playing uh, some songs from the record. And, uh, you know, just excited to get back out there. But I, I would agree, it's, it's one of the best records we've done. I mean, we, we, uh, we really pushed hard for this one, and uh, the reaction's been amazing. Definitely. When we last talked four years ago, you mentioned trying to come together to make this world a better place. Do you feel like humanity has made any progress since then? Oh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I would like to think, but, you know, I try to, like I said, well, we've just been so busy doing a lot of stuff, you know, and all, you know, off time. I just, like, I've been had my eye on everything. It's not like I always have my eye on it. You know, I, look, there's plenty of kind acts out there everywhere you look. Um, you just gotta, you just gotta look. And I try to stay focused on that more than any of the negative stuff that happens in the world, even though it's, you know, you shouldn't really maybe turn a blind eye to it, but, at the same time, um, you know, I, I just I like to think about the, the good stuff that's happening and, the you know, and the people that are, uh, you know, looking out for, for other people as well as, you know, themselves and your family. It's what you have to do. Yeah, it's a great mindset to have. Yeah, positivity. Yes, definitely. Do you ever think about how many people you've helped in life through your music? Uh, well, I don't sit back and think, oh, man, we're so great. We help everybody. No, but, but we, we, you know, over the years, of course, me, and I'm always, I'm always, um, uh, not, no, it doesn't boggle the mind, but you, know, you think about the songs we sing, you know, and what we sing about, and obviously they're all horror movies and whatnot, but people just have told us, and, and I mean, it's just been like, look, you, you saved me. You, you got me through so much hard stuff. And, you know, <clears throat> there's a band I listen to. I, I pretty much made it clear in a lot of, uh, uh, interviews but there's a band called off with their heads um if you would read their lyrics you might think that you know it's just about you know how bad you know uh, uh ryan's life was and the, you know but i think it's gaining strength from that you know it's really what i took what i took from it and i listened to them for a lot of years when i was on tour when i was just having a lot of bad times and questioning if i wanted to do it anymore and you know how i miss my family and whatnot and you know it always picked me up and it always it inspires me when people, you know, take hard music, you know, you know, get, uh, granted the nature of it is crazy, you know, and, and, and horror movies, but they find some kind of just inspiration. In it. And that's what music does. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be a song that sings about flowers and daisies to make it mean something to you. You know, there are so many different bands in, in, in the genre of metal that have so many different songs about so many different subjects. It's the song. It's, it's the beat. It's the pulse. Sometimes it's the lyrics. Sometimes the lyrics are inspiring. Sometimes they seem not so inspiring, but you find the inspiration in the darkness. So I, I'm, you know, <clears throat> I'm not surprised, but I'm always, I always feel really good when people tell me it. Sometimes, I mean, seriously, sometimes it's hard to hear some of the stories, you know, that people tell you about how, like, you know, we, like some, I've heard people say, you say me, I was, I was about to end it all. Like, you know, and that's very powerful that, you know, to think that you could, you know, your music can inspire people to just go, listen, there's a reason to be here. There's a reason to stay alive. You know, I mean, that's, it's, that's, that's humbling. So, uh, um, you know, like I said, I, I, I don't sit around and think about it, but we've met an a, a, a amazing amount of people that have uh, told us this very same thing, you know, that you, your music inspires us and it makes our life better or, 
brightens our day or whatnot. And to me, that's awesome. I, I, you know, I mean, I got into music because I loved it and I wanted to play it. And I just wanted to be like Slayer and Celtic Frost and I wanted to do what they were doing. <clears throat> but when you get older and you start realizing how much you impact people's lives just by banging my head and, and yelling at them, you know, it's awesome. Couldn't have said it better. Music is the best therapy. It is. Your vocals on the new record sound fantastic as usual. Did you ever think you'd become such a successful metal singer when you were a kid? Well, thank you, number one. Um, <clears throat> I, I just sat up in my room and screamed and yelled along with all the records that I liked. I just tried to emulate the guys that I was growing up listening to. And um, <clears throat> I don't know if I thought I was ever going to be here. I mean, I was determined to be in a band, no matter what. I don't know if it would. I would have could have solved it. it would be like this. I mean, on one hand, though, it's just to not be, you know, <clears throat> I like to try to be humble about things. But I, when I was when I was younger, I had a little toot on my shoulder. I had, I had a chip. And I was always like, I'm going to be there. There's no doubt. Nobody's going to stop me. Nothing's, so that was more like drive, more than like, say, arrogance. Um, I, I believed I would be here. But I don't know if I could have believed that everything that I've done up to now would have been would have been this much. I mean, I, I, I <clears throat> when I left Baltimore, Maryland to go to Florida, you know, when I left Corpse Grinder, my first band, which is now my new band, I guess, you know, but my first band, Corpse Grinder, <clears throat> when I left and I went to uh, to to Florida to start Monstrosity with Lee Harrison, I told all my friends there that, you know, and, and they're all still my friends, but, you know, some of them had their doubts. I'd be back. You know, it would just, you know, you do it, you do a demo and you come back and big deal. And I told him, no, I'm going to do a demo and we're going to put the demo out. People are going to like it. And I guarantee you when, uh, you know, when I go back down, we're going to record a record and that all happened. And we did Imperial Doom, which this year is the 30 year anniversary of, of, of the first record I ever did. Um, and so I went down and did what I said I was going to do. And this all correlates, you know, goes back to your, your question because, you know, I, then I had a chip on my shoulder. Then I was like, Hell yeah, I am going to do this and no one's getting in my way. Well, I mean, but, you know, back when I was younger, younger, I just wanted to be in a band. I just wanted people to chant my name like they used to chant Slayer at all the shows. And, uh, you know, but when I came down here, I did what I said I was going to do. I, it changed. You know, I ended up getting a Cannibal Corpse and I still did the second monstrosity record when that, you know, while I was in Cannibal Corpse. And then, of course, everything else has followed after that. But and I, I always believed that I would be doing this, but I didn't, I didn't know it was going to be this big or this, you know, crazy. Maybe these people cutting the grass <laughs> are killing me. I don't know if you can hear it, but... I can't hear it. You're all good. good. Okay, perfect. All right. Sorry, listeners. People are cutting my grass, you know, making a lot of noise. What are your top five favorite horror movies of all time? That's hard. I mean, I, I would probably say The Shining for sure. Um, the Exorcist is, is probably somewhere in there. The Evil Dead's are great, you know. Um, it, it depends because there's monster movies that I don't know people would say are, are horror movies, you know, per se, you know. Monster movies, I think, have their own category. There's horror movies, there's monster movies. And, and horror movies, too. Also, all the Lucio Fulci movies, you know, are great. Dario Argento, um, you know. And there's movies that, like, you know, like Suspiria is kind of in, in, the, in, in the realm of... of um, of uh, the shining it's more psychological like Fulci movies are just straight out gore i think cannibal has a mix of all that too though we have some songs that are kind of in the shining area and also kind of in in um in like you know gates of hell you know you know, you know super gore area if you won a million dollars what's the first thing you would do um well scream <laughs> as i said uh i would i would definitely go you know i would, uh, you know Especially if it's like the lottery and you, you count the, the numbers down and you're like, oh, wait, wait, what? You know, the, I, that would be the initial reaction. But then I, I, I mean, I would, I would really think, and, and it's a cliche answer, but I would think about, you know, like my parents, you know, if I could help my parents out, my brother and my sister, my wife's side of the family, you know, be up to her thinking about who she could, you know, help out, um, you know, and, and I like got a lot of friends who I would probably be like, hey, man. A little bit of money, you know, hope it helps out in some way. You know, I'm, I would probably think about, you know, donating some money to like St. Jude's or something like that. You know, that's, you know, I, uh, we knew a lady, there's a, uh, there's a outdoor mall up the street from our house. And there was a lady there that was selling stuffed animals. 
Then, and she would take any stuffed animal. If it was ripped, if it was dirty, she would clean them up. She would stitch them up. And uh, she, was re- she was selling them, or new ones. She was selling them and donating the money to St. Jude's. So just 100% of the money was going to them. And the, I like St. Jude's because they don't turn any, any, any kid away. 100% of the money, you know, goes back into, you know, research, you know, to, to hopefully end cancer um, in children. And so I remember we were there. And she was packing her stuff up and she was there with her, her son. And I said, Hey, you're, you're taking like stuffed animal donations. And she's like, yeah. And I said, okay, well, look, I live five minutes away. My wife and I will come back. We just, we have some stuffed animals. We'll give you, you know, if, if you can just stay for another like 10 minutes. And she was like, okay. I was like, I just want to help, you know, and, and if you're doing this, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good cause, you know? So I it would, it would come to a million dollars. Yeah. I would think about, you know, Helping, you know, St. Jude's out or some other place, you know, I mean, that's, it's always a good thing for me. Maybe help out like my daughter's old uh, elementary school because they're, you know, we still speak to those teachers and whatnot and teachers are a, a big deal and they, and they help, you know, good teachers will, will, you know, resonate throughout a, a child's life. You'll remember the teachers that you really liked, the ones that really inspired you, helped you, you know, through some difficult, you know, learning t- experiences or whatever. Um, so I would probably, you know, do that. And obviously I would think, you know, putting a lot of money away to make sure my kids were, you know, taken care of. Um, and, you know, maybe going on a, a really, 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 really good vacation, you know, somewhere with, with, the with the wife and, and the kids, you know. Awesome. What is your favorite Campbell Corpse album cover? Well, favorite album cover? Oh, I don't know. Um, well, uh. I think Butcher at Birth is pretty um, crazy. That's that one's, you know, I, mean, I know people are like, that's a terrible cover, you know, but whatever. Um, it's a brutal cover. Uh, I like the torture cover too. Um, I think they're all really killer. I mean, Vincent Locke is an amazing artist, so you can't go wrong with any one of them. You know, um, I liked the weirdness, the, the, the craziness of like Bloodthirst. You know, it, it had a, you know, you know, it's, it's that's, that's that's pretty crazy. Live cannibalism as a cool, you know, cover. You know, maybe Vile is sentimental to me because it's the first record I did with them. But um, yeah, I don't know. I do. I do think uh, probably one of the fan favorites. If it's, you want to go fan favorite, it's definitely Butchered at Birth is one that people always get because it. That's a that's one that um, like I said. Look, shout out to all the great teachers out there. But that's the one that maybe makes your teacher go, "Hey, you got to go." Home. You know, you can't stay in school with that shirt. Come on. But uh, the Violence on the Magic cover is pretty brutal, too. Yeah, definitely. What's your favorite <laughs> item that you got for Christmas? Um, well, uh, for me, Christmas now is more about, like, watching everyone else open their presents. You know, when I was younger, of course, I wanted the, the Boba Fett spaceship. I wanted the Boba Fett, like, 18-inch figure that they made, you know. Um, you know, there was some years where... I, you know, my parents took me to the store and, and I was like, I want, I want this, I want this record by Dio. I want this record by Ozzy. I want this Judas Priest record, you know? Um, and then it became, you know, just, you know, of course, toys and whatever when I was younger. But for me now, I just, I, I'm more excited. Like there are times when we would go shopping for Christmas and we'll find something really cool that one of our daughters likes. Like my, for instance, my oldest daughter loves Harry Potter. So we would find something really cool. And I'd be like, I want to give it to her now. I cannot wait. It, that drives, I, I wait for Christmas just to see the reaction on their faces when we buy them things. That's bigger to me. I mean, if I had to pick one thing, we had an early Christmas present when we, we bought the uh, Home Alone house, the Lego Home Alone house. That was, that was pretty awesome. Um, I'm sure my wife, you know, I can't, I can't, I'm really th- trying to think about, you know. Um, I'll tell you another thing, you know, be honest, when she sees this, she'll, she'll, she, she would tell you this. You know, we have some stockings and she'll always buy me a bunch of like scratch offs, you know, the lottery scratch offs. And I love those. I mean, I, you could give and, and my mother, you know, she's like, what do you want? I'm like, mom, years ago, if you got socks and underwear, you were just like, oh, but now I'm like, yeah, I need them. You know, I, I got socks and underwear. I'll save them for when I go on tour. Or I, I need them now because I got holes in my socks. So those are good gifts to me. Uh, but yeah, this Christmas, my, my, my gifts in, in, since we've had children, you know, and my daughter, she'll be, geez, my oldest daughter will be 18 this year in, in December. 18, unreal. Um, but my gifts have always been just what, you know, and my wife and, and my kids opening what they got. 
you know, especially the kids, because when they were younger, man, it's, there's nothing like it. It's like, Oh, it's, that just warms my heart. <laughs> yeah. That that's better than any gift you can give me. You know, that there's nothing that can, nothing changes that. Yeah. Nothing beats that. Nothing. Which song off of violence <laughs> unimagined are you most excited to perform live on your upcoming tour? Oh, excuse me for that. Um, well, I can't tell you because, you know, I can't tell you the set list. No, uh, um, I, I'm really, I, I'm, well, we're, you know, we're going to be playing songs from it. Condemnation Contagion is one. I'm really, I really think the crowd's going to, that's, that's got the, that's the headbanger. It's got the, you know, just the, the head bob thing. So I'm pretty excited to play that. I'm excited to play all the songs. I'm excited to just play a show, you know, we're just ready to play. I mean, we played uh, Seco Las Vegas last year and um, it was just like, it's like getting the, someone making you the greatest sandwich ever, the greatest steak sub you ever had. You take a bite of it and then you take it away. That's what doing Seco Las Vegas was because we went and we played and it was like, no, there's no more shows. And, you know, we, we, we were already working on this tour, but you know, we hadn't announced it. And so, you know, it was, and it was a lot of months away. So now it's finally, we're getting close to it and hopefully everything works out and we can do it and complete the whole tour and have no issues. That sandwich is on the horizon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no. Cause the, the, like I said, Sam, the full sandwich, the whole sandwich. Yeah. yeah. You, you, get, you get to eat the whole thing. Hopefully not, not just one bite and then, you know, you got to go home. Now for these, you're just going to simply name your favorite album from each of these bands. Judas Priest. At least in the East. Merciful Fate. Don't Break the Earth. My favorite record of all time. Megadeth. He sells. But who's by? <laughs> Slayer. Ooh, Rain and Blood, probably, I would say. Can't go wrong with it. Death. Death? Oh, Scream Blood Core. Morbid Angel. Oh, there's a madness. Black Sabbath. Uh, Black Sabbath, Master of Reality, you know. That's a great one. Obituary. Oh, slowly we rot. Cannibal Corpse. Oh, oh, geez. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. I never thought about it. Maybe uh, for me, vocally, maybe Bloodthirst, I guess. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't even know. I, I bounce would imagine. It can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with it. <laughs> What are your favorite newer death metal bands? Oh, like I said, uh, Gate Creeper is pretty cool. Uh, I saw a band Frozen Soul. I saw them. You know, um, there's a bunch of bands going out here now. I mean, the scene is 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 just as healthy as it's ever been. It's just as great as it's ever been. It's not dead. It's not terrible. I'm proud of of the of the death metal scene today. I'm so proud of it. I think it's amazing. I think there's so many great bands. Um, and, you know, look, we're, we're going out on tour with Revocation and Whitechapel and, you know, two awesome, great bands. And, uh, you know, the scene couldn't be better. Um, and anyone who thinks otherwise, you know, kiss rocks because, you know, the, the, I, I'm so proud of, this death, of the death metal scene. And I, I, I really, uh, I really, uh, I encourage everyone to go out, you know, listen, listen to the old bands, of course, you know, the old, the old way Pave the way. Go listen to Possessed. They're the first death metal band. Okay. Go listen to them. Listen to everything in between. Listen to Creator, who I think are, are kind of the bridge, like Death Thrash band. That, you know, without Creator, there would be no Cannibal Corpse. Um, um, you know, listen to those bands and, and listen to, to, to obviously all the old classic bands like Cannibal and, and Death, Obituary, Deicide, Morbid Angel. I mean, all those bands. Then you have Aeon. You know, you have Black Dolly Murder and Dying Fetus. And like I said, newer bands. Uh, Gate Creeper has been around, you know, for a while. But, you know, th dude, th there's so much great death metal going on. The scene has never been better. And anyone who thinks otherwise, you know, just, you know, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Agreed. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, just uh, hope to see everyone on tour for, um, you know, with Whitechapel and Revocation and uh, be safe, stay metal, you know, just, you know. Thank you so much for doing this. It was a pleasure talking to you again. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for having me. No problem. Yeah. Awesome. 
I just want to say thank you once again to Corpse Grind for doing this interview. He is awesome. Uh, I just want to show some of my Cannibal Corpse vinyl. My favorite era of Cannibal Corpse is the ones with Corpse Grinder. So here is Red for Black. Check out this color vinyl. It's for Red Before Black. Violence Unimagined. This one is probably one of the coolest colors that we have, and it's for Violence Unimagined. I also have the picture disc to torture. And a picture disc for kill. Also, I have this all-access pass from when I got to see them live. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much, and I really hope you have a wonderful day. And keep your eyes out for Cannibal Corpse Live.